Fortnite is a phenomenon, a behemoth in the video game industry. You like that word, behemoth? <laughs> Me too. Yet, many aspects of the development and origins of the game are still shrouded in mystery. There are so many crazy things about the game that people don't even know. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, Keith Allen, and make sure to follow me on my Instagram. Hey, we got a lot going on, great conversations. Hey, so from the entire Battle Royale's genre's strange origins to the insanely long development of the game, there's a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. Today, we're gonna be counting down seven insane Fortnite facts you probably didn't know. Oh, and uh, also, if you want to learn more about how to be an insane player when it comes to playing Fortnite, head on over to InstaPro on ProGuides.com. We have the best coaches in the game, guys, ready to teach you insider tips and tricks for less than you can get anywhere else. I mean, where was this when I started playing Fortnite? Okay, so here's the first insane fact for you. The game was initially announced in 2011. Yeah, I said 2011. Most of you guys weren't even born yet. <laughs> the first teaser trailer to save the world released on December 8th, 2011 for the Spike Video Game Awards, which doesn't even exist anymore, by the way. But the game came out an entire six years later. Think about this, Bug Hub was only 10 years old. Think about all that has happened in the last six years. There are 500 million more people on the earth, eight iPhones were released, and three Olympics have taken place. Crazy. Producer Zach Phelps said it took so long to develop because they wanted to do free to play right. Let's start rethinking how do we take this core experience as harvesting, exploration, building, defending, how do we take it to the next level? Yeah. And that's where the two year game that we had in development became a five year game in development because then we had to go back and think about how do we make it free to play? How do we make it so we have a really core, great progression? How do we get 300 hours of game experience in there? And that's where we're at today. Which is pretty ironic considering the Battle Royale mode took only two months to develop. And now it's the most popular game of all time. Who agrees with that? All their hard work did not go to waste though. Okay, so if Fortnite hadn't been as polished as it is, people wouldn't have picked it up in the first place. The first time you played Fortnite, think about this, you probably noticed how it doesn't even feel free, which is due to Epic's dedication to perfecting the game. In the blog post where they announced Fortnite, Epic mentioned that Fortnite's foundation would fit well in a battle royale game. So they decided to make it. Two years later, huh, voila, here we are. Battle Royale was based off of a book, which is crazy because most of you guys hate to read. <laughs> In fact, the entire genre was inspired by the 1999 Japanese novel Battle Royale, where a bunch of high schoolers are kidnapped and they're dropped on an island to kill each other as part of a military program. Each student is equipped with a tracking collar, which can potentially kill them as well as guns and equipment, right? Certain students receive guns and swords, but some receive boomerangs. Wait, this is starting to sound a lot like Fortnite. The zones continue to move and shrink until everyone is forced to kill each other. Okay, this sounds really familiar, right? Well, the book was a surprise bestseller and was likely the origin of any Battle Royale game or movie that came later. The similarities are pretty shockingly similar. <laughs> Honestly, if you don't mind the subtitles, I highly recommend this movie. However, just letting you guys know, <laughs> it's pretty freaky. <laughs> So after its release, oh my goodness, there was just this snowball effect where the Hunger Games came out. You guys remember those movies? Then the H1Z1, then Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which finally made Epic hop on the Battle Royale hype train. Now the Battle Royale industry holds about 12%. I said 12% of all revenue of all video games. Fortnite was supposed to be a horror game. Fortnite, as we know it today, has a cartoony, you know, kid-friendly style, right? It meant to appeal to people of all ages. At the beginning of development, the game was taken to a very different direction, as we know. Originally, Fortnite was supposed to be a horror-themed game with a very dark and eerie style, you know, reminiscent of many other games at the time. In fact, that's why they decided to change course. Gears of War, Unreal Tournament, Infinity Blade, they're all gory, bloody games. Epic didn't want to just make another violent game, so they switched it up, which was very smart. You can see some photos here created by Aaron Smith, a concept artist at Epic Games. The zombies from Save the World actually used to look pretty creepy. He describes them as just old Fortnite concepts from a time when the game's visual style was very different. These are the creatures that didn't make the cut. The long, spider-like limbs probably wouldn't be too appealing to kids. Don't get scared, guys. I mean, Slenderman, anybody? Part of what gives Fortnite its charm and its art style, right? Even though it's still a new game, hey, it has a memorable, nostalgia-triggering feel. Looking at this, it definitely wouldn't give off the same vibe. 
Okay, so imagine if Epic had gone in another direction. We probably wouldn't even be talking about Fortnite at all. Rod Ferguson, an ex-director who worked at Epic, decided which ideas should be made into full games, almost canceled the entire project. I was like, if I had stayed at Epic, I would have canceled Fortnite. Like, <laughs> <laughs> would so, you really have? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh I already, before I left, I can't. Oh, good night. Yeah, before I left, I tried to cancel Fortnite. Like, so... The, the Fortnite, like you, I mean, be, I, when it was Save the World, like there was that, there was a, uh, you know, there's a project that just has some challenges. Sure. And as a director of production at the time, like that game would not have passed my bar for something we should continue to keep going. The crazy ship and style is probably what saved Fortnite. So whoever did that, thank you. Some of his original art actually did end up making it into the game, though. His brute concept was later added to the game in a slightly decryptified way. Professional sports teams are banning their players from playing Fortnite. Oh my goodness. It seems like Fortnite is everywhere. For God's sake, even Drake is playing it. And NFL teams can't even stop their players from doing Fortnite dances in the end zone. Professional athletes, ladies and gentlemen, are officially hopping on the Fortnite bandwagon. Let's do this. Okay, check this out. One Major League Baseball team had a really good time with the game, right? So much that it was apparently preventing them from playing well. That's what they said. I mean, maybe the Lakers missed the playoffs because of this too, right? and even led to an injury of a pitcher. The Red Sox, Boston baseball team, forbade any of their players from playing because I guess it was just too much of a distraction. Allegedly, they were losing at the time, right? <laughs> right. And Fortnite was just making them more counterproductive. For pitcher David Price, it gave him carpal tunnel and even led to him missing a game. Wow, I mean, I guess you can't even really blame the guy though. I mean, how many of us have put off some responsibilities in place of Fortnite? Okay, I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> what about you? Don't lie, you know you are too. Anyway, after the ban, they went on to win the World Series. So apparently, they made the right move, and they beat my Dodgers. So you mean to tell me they could have been playing Fortnite the entire time and lost? Epic tried to sue a 14-year-old kid for cheating. Okay, so we all hate cheaters, right? If you agree with me, this is what I want you to do. Smash that like button if you agree. Yes, we hate cheaters. No? <laughs> okay, then. Cheaters are not fun to play against, and apparently Epic really agrees. Like, a lot. Back in 2017, a 14-year-old was found cheating and was banned shortly after. Normally, you know, it just ends there, right? Well, no, Epic was a little hot about that, so they decided to take it one step further and actually brought it to court. Cheating allegedly violates Epic's end-user license agreement and the Copyright Act, which allows them to take legal action against the cheater. It's extreme, guys. I mean, like, really extreme. Talk about making a statement. Needless to say, the kid's mom wasn't very happy either. For good reason, though. I mean, this massive company worth billions of dollars is going after a teenager who downloaded hacks off of a website? Wow. She wrote a note to the court, which led them to settling on this agreement. If the player injects any more code into their game, they will be fined $5,000. Okay, it could be worse, right? I mean, it could be like $7,000. <laughs> but this certainly was not a great look for the company. Epic has also had its fair share of lawsuits thrown at them at times. They were even sued by the creators of PUBG, Bluehole. The lawsuit stems from a blog post made by Epic for the announcement of Battle Royale that stated, We love Battle Royale games like PUBG and thought Fortnite would make a great foundation for our own version. Bluehole used this example in their case where they accused Fortnite of stealing their intellectual property. Eventually, they decided to drop the case due to insufficient evidence. Alright, Fortnite characters are really athletic. Who says gamers are fat and lazy? Hmm? Well, I think a lot of people actually. But they're wrong! This may sound strange, but if you do the math, Fortnite characters are super fit. It was calculated that running across one grid square on the map takes about 45 seconds. Okay, so if each square is 250 meters, that means that they're moving around like 20 kilometers per hour, or 12 miles per hour while carrying hundreds of pounds of gear. That means they could probably run a world record pace marathon time. Not to mention they could probably get their heads up to a 10-foot basket, which means they also have a really high vertical jump. That's higher than LeBron, people. He can still get up there. No wonder there are so many sports skins. That was probably their job before the apocalypse. Maybe soccer skins aren't so sweaty after all. Hmm. The storm was created by a company to sell their product. You know, there are lots of crazy rumors about the lore in Fortnite, right? But this one is pretty convincing. As the story goes, a storm began taking over the Earth that would mutate anyone inside of it into a zombie. Throughout Save the World, Vendor Tech is regularly mentioned as a technology manufacturer that creates shelters. Well, after the storm begins to take over the Earth, Vendor Tech mysteriously disappears. Hmm. Supposedly, they created this storm on purpose. They wanted to market their storm protection technology, so they just decided to create something that people would need. Those storm show generators? Okay, so where do you think they come from? Vendor Tech, of course. Eventually, the storm gets out of hand to a point where not even the creators can control it. 
What's the story behind the Battle Royale Island then, you might ask? The Battle Royale is a training ground where the best warriors are found, the most suitable to fight the invading storm. Those go on to be the heroes we see and save the world. Okay, so maybe that part doesn't make too much sense, right? But I think it's a very good theory. We keep learning more as the season goes on, but this is the best we've got so far. Most of the crazy facts about Fortnite come from the sheer scale of the game. It's just past 250 million players, whoo! And some of the other stats about the game are just crazy. 100,000 years of Fortnite streams have been watched and 300,000 years played. There are more players than there are people in Brazil. Fortnite made $300 million in one month. The average player has spent $85. No wonder they've made $2.5 billion. Well, there we go, folks. The history of Fortnite has been a rocky ride, and it looks like the roller coaster will continue. And speaking on behalf of all Fortnite fans, I think we're all excited to see what they're going to throw at us next. Did any of this surprise you? Let us know. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy Keith Allen, and once again, hey, connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to talk to you, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for tips and trips from Fortnite pros.